going to jump all the way up to what our section six, which is the scoring portion of it, and talk a little bit about the catch photo release portion. I'm going to share maybe some experiences I, I had uh, at, at Otter Tail that I think are valuable as well. You also have your boat number board. In the morning when you get into water, you'll hold up your boat, boat number board, and at the time probably a boat inspection, you'll let us know what your boat number is. We'll be giving you a packet like this. And inside that packet, this yellow card is your official score card. Okay? You can write every fish, the length of each fish that you catch on that score card. And at the end of the day, you're going to take the six fish that you want to submit for scoring and mark an X next to them and then sign that official score card and turn it in. Okay? So you have to indicate which six fish. You could have 20 fish on that card, but which six fish that you want to submit for us to be able to record the score on. Okay? Uh, when you catch a fish, taking the picture process, I think it was best. I think it was real well understood when I said when you have the fish on the ruler and you're taking a picture of the fish on the ruler, I can zoom in. I mean, with the computer equipment, much better than you guys can with your camera equipment. Okay, so I'm going to be able to get a better look at it than what you can. Uh, I want you to orient the fish the same way on every picture, and my suggestion is head on the left and belly towards you, and then do all of the fish the same way. What I'm getting to there is I need to see the same side of every fish. I can't be having measurements of the left side of one fish and the right side of another fish. And that's because when it gets to the detail, if I got fish of identical or very close measurements, I am looking at the scale patterns. Every fish is unique in the scale patterns that they have, and I can, I can zoom in to that level and make sure that that's not a duplicate you know, counted fish. That's not the same fish that you had counted earlier. So I'll be doing that on my end. What I need from you is I need every fish that you measure on that ruler has to be showing the same side of the fish. And if I just make it easy for you, I'll say head on the left and belly towards you, and then you've accomplished that. Okay? Now if you want to put head on the right and belly belly towards you, just do every fish that way. Okay? So be be diligent. Now, when it comes to taking pictures of the fish on the ruler, take as many as you need. If you have to take 10 pictures to get to the point that you feel that you've got a good picture, just keep on taking pictures. And when you're satisfied that you have at least one good picture in a series of pictures on that ruler, then you take what we call a hero shot. Have your partner hold the fish up before releasing, and then that is essentially the break in between that fish and the next fish. So when I see that hero shot, I hear somebody holding, see the photo of a person holding the fish, I know the pictures that follow that now are the next, the next fish that you've caught. Okay? One of the things that happened at Otter Tail, several times, six or seven times, guys call up and says, as soon as we got a good measurement, you know, my partner says, okay, got it, and I took the fish and I threw it overboard and we forgot to take the hero shot. Okay? It's not a big deal, just take a picture of your partner. I mean, I want the picture of the fish to tell you the truth, but if you happen to do that by mistake, just take the picture of your partner. It's still the break in between the end of the photos of that fish and the next fish that you're going to be submitting for measurement. So that's not a DQ situation if you forget to take that girl shot, but I do want a break in there. So take a picture of your partner or something like that if you happen to make that whoops. And that happened a half a dozen times. Something else I'll talk about is taking measurements. And like I said, I can zoom in and I can see them real well. There were three or four pictures in Otter Tail, and I looked in, on the card, you know, well, Mr. Longtime here, he was one of them. He had a 20, he had the big fish of the tournament, 27 inch fish that they submitted, and I looked at that picture, and I looked, at, he had three pictures of it, and, I, and two of the pictures on it, that fish, he could have counted it 27 and a quarter. Well, by that, what I'm saying is when you're measuring fish, the measurement that you're going to record is that the fish touches the, the 16 inch line, then the length of fish that you record is the next quarter up, 16 and a quarter. So whatever line that fish touches, the length of fish that you write down, you always round up to the next quarter. Okay? It can be over it by an eighth of an inch. If it just barely touches, you can round up to the next quarter. But like Mr. Longtime, that 27 inch fish just barely touched that 27 inch line, and he made the decision and says, you know what? I don't know if that picture is going to show that that fish touched the 27 inch line or not, but I know for sure that it touched the 26 and 3 quarter. I'm going to record it okay, as a 27 inch fish, which means it only had to touch 26 and 3 quarter, 
and no, then I know for sure it's not going to be zero. And I'm fine with that. I'm going to give up a quarter inch because it was so damn close that I don't want to risk losing the measurement in that fish. And that's what would happen if, we're, if we can't verify in your photo that that fish is that long. What will happen is I'll count one toward your limit and a zero on your weight. It won't DQ you for the tournament. It'll count one for the limit and zero is the weight. Okay, the minimum length for a fish in this tournament is 15. Now, so that means, guys, you have to be at least 15 inches. You have to touch that 15 inch line with a fish. So what's the minimum length that will be on any card that I see? 15 and a quarter. Okay. So that should be the minimum length that I see written on a card because every photo will have it at least touching the 15 inch line. I don't think you'll have a problem with that. There's going to be some nice sized fish. The other thing that you see in here is there's a ribbon, just like the ribbon we tie in the front of your bow eye, that orange ribbon in there. What happens is you don't know the color I'm going to give you until tomorrow morning, just like when we do boat inspections. You don't know what color or ribbon we're going to put on your boat to do, the, do that. You're not going to know what color that ribbon and then those polka dots in there as well. Uh, I didn't prep a ruler. Not orange. Right? Well, maybe it'll be orange. I don't know. <laughs> I just prepped the sample and will be able to show you it's not going to be orange. But uh, what, what, I, what I'm going to have you do, it just adds a little bit more validity that the pictures I'm going to be looking at came from our fishing tomorrow in the water. Is you take those orange dots, put them on the ruler, spread them out a little bit, try to put them, if you need to cut them and make them a little bit smaller so they don't cover your, your inch lines and things like that, feel free to do that. And tie that ribbon onto your ruler. In every picture, I want to see at least a portion of any one of those dots or that, or that ribbon. And you know what? You could probably use a ribbon and that's it. What happened at Otter Tail, just as an FYI too, is some of the rulers were wet when they put the dots on and when they put that first fish on, the dots just started sliding right off. But you still have that ribbon, and if I could at least see a portion of that ribbon in every picture, you're fine. I just want to see a portion of any one of those in each picture of your fish on the ruler, and that will give a little bit additional assurance that the photo was taken from the day of the tournament. So, uh, there's also going to be a pen in there for a scorecard. Hopefully it works for you. I'm not going to guarantee it'll continue to work. If you have problems like that, or you have problems with your camera, uh, going back into the into the packet that you got tonight. You've got the phone numbers for myself and Tammy Stillwell. Give us a call. We'll come out. We've got some cameras that we can exchange with you. Not many, but we've got a few that we can exchange with you and be able to try to get another camera into your hands so you can uh, you can have a camera to finish out the tournament. If you carry a spare camera, it's not a bad idea yourselves. You know, if you've got a couple of them. Uh, if you've got a camera that doesn't use the SD cards that we gave you, I was more concerned with that before Ottertail. Out of the group that we had at Otter Tail, we had one guy that uh, he, his camera wouldn't accept that standard size SD card, but he just swapped it out. So certainly might be a good idea to just make sure it fits in your camera. But if you have a problem with that in the morning, just let us know. I, I thought a lot of people were going to submit their own SD cards and their own photo cards for us to clean off. I, I don't want to clean off cards all night when we get done with the rules meeting, which is why he says we're going to buy some cards and just supply them. And I'm actually very pleased that everybody's saying, hey, we're just going to use your cards. And then I don't have to worry about trying to return them to you after the tournament and things of that nature. But it looks like that's pretty widely and universally working for you guys. Or it certainly did at Otter Tail. If it doesn't work for you in this tournament, get in touch with me, we'll work something out. Okay? We'll have a way to be able to utilize your SD card if you want to use yours. Um, do we have anything else to talk about when it comes to measuring fish? Some of you guys help me a little bit. Any questions that you haven't measured? Go ahead. 20 inch limit, you can go as many over 20. Yep, yep. As many, as many fish over every fish that you catch uh, can be recorded. So, I mean, what you want is you want every fish over 20 inches. And you might get it where we're going, too. Everybody might get it where we're going. <laughs> Uh, another thing I guess I'll mention, and uh, we will be boarding boats tomorrow, and we're going to do that during these tournaments, and primarily, number one thing, with a catch boat or release tournament, you can't have a walleye in your live well. If you have a walleye in your live well, you're going to be DQ'd, no questions, there's, there's no defense, there's nothing to be talked about. Now, if you happen to have a fish that you record, and you throw it over the side of the boat, and he looks like he's dying, and you don't want to leave that dead fish in the water, 
again, what you do, Kyle will be out in the water, I'll be out in the water. I think Brian Dolan called me this afternoon, he's going to be up there, we'll be out in the water. Call your tournament volunteers, we'll come over and address that fish that's floating in the water. Okay? We'll be the ones to address what has to happen with that fish. So keep it out of your boat, and if there's that concern that it's, it's flipped up and it's dying, I mean, we probably won't do a lot with it either. If, we, if we're on a lake with a slot, we probably can't do much either. It probably ends up being fish food or bird food. But that's, uh, that's what I'll say is your answer. If you get in a situation like that and you don't want to see that fish that's sitting their belly up, we'll come over and nurse it around and see if we can get it to swim down.